as a technical exercise, our first step is to try to match the emoji we made. But then we can always improve upon it because if we understand each part and make each part, we can always change it. But there's a problem with making vectors, trying to match something that's underneath. And that's as soon as I put it down, it covers up what's underneath, right? So we're going to create a little bit of a working space for us that solves that problem. I am going to select the base layer, my screen grab, and I'm going to duplicate it, clicking Command J. Make sure you don't have anything selected, and you can always clear selections by hitting Command D within Photoshop. So if I hit Command J, it will make a copy of it. I am then going to click and grab and move that layer up above the other layer. And this is just an easy way to show you how if you click and grab it, you can move layers above and below. But a nice shortcut for that is right underneath the command plus and the command minus shortcut, which allows you to zoom in and out, and the command zero, which puts it all on the screen. Command right bracket will move the layer up. Command left bracket will move the layer down. All right. Now the problem is that my screen grab is covering up what I did. So what I'm going to do is take its opacity down to 50%. This is called onion skinning. It's like using tracing paper. It's called onion skinning because a type of architectural vellum that's used for, for making lots of copies is called onion skin. It's like a brown plastic-based tracing paper. Now, I'm going to click on the lock button because I don't want to accidentally move or mess with this layer. So I'm padlocking that, that top layer. And I can go ahead and padlock the bottom layer as well. So all I'm doing is using the layers in between. Now, what's the next biggest shape? The next biggest shape is probably the mushroom cloud, right? So I'm not going to be able to build that out of one shape. Instead, I'm going to layer up a bunch of shapes, and I'm going to use the, the dark pink first. So I'm going to click on my ellipse tool again. And if I want a perfect circle, I can hold down Shift as I use it, and that will lock it into a circle. And then I can use the Move tool and move it around. And I can use Command T and hold down Shift to lock its proportions. And it's ironic, right? Because with Command T, if you hold down Shift, it lets you warp it. But with Vector Shape Tools, if you hold down Shift, it locks them into a perfect square or a perfect circle. So Shift as the modifier. I put it down. I hit Return to place it. And then to color it, this is the new thing. I have to double click on the, the icon for the layer. And then I can steal the color directly. And if I turn off my onion skin layer, you'll see what I just created. All right, so now I've just built you know, a little circle. Instead of going back to the ellipse tool and, and keep building more circles, I can also just duplicate the circle I did. So I'm going to do Command J and then use the Move tool, and I have a duplicate of the circle as a new layer on top, and I can move that in. Something you'll notice about shape-based design is that there's a lot of repetition <laughs> of the same shapes. And then Command J, I can use it again. And then Command J. And now I want to shrink it a little bit, so I do Command T, I hold down Shift, Actually, I don't hold down shift with command T, sorry, to lock, keep its proportions locked. And I move it in, hit return, and now I hit command T, or command J rather, and now I have this shape to move around and put where I want. And I can use my arrow keys. It's going to give you little internal guidelines sometimes. And if you don't want to have to be stuck with those, you can click on view 
and uncheck snap and then it won't snap to them but you can also use the arrow keys always to break free of those suggested guideline movements and i'm going to duplicate my large circle again and move it over okay now is a good time to check something and just do it one more time and move it over here circles are great because we never need to rotate them right Okay, so now I've got quite a few layers. I'll try to show you. And if I turn off my bottom layer and my top layer and I zoom in, I can actually see what these vectors look like. And there's a problem. My vector shapes have a black outline around them. And you can see that under what's called appearance. Appearance has the pink fill but it also has what's called a stroke and a stroke is an outline to a vector path so what i want to do is i want to click on that stroke if you're getting that and i want to use the the white rectangle that has a red bar through it that's universal symbol for no <laughs> and that will mean no stroke so if i do that and say no stroke it will get rid of the stroke but i have to do it on all of them so I have my move tool and I have auto select layer. So that will select the vector for me. And then on future shapes, it will do whatever the, the layer I was last on, whatever properties it had, the color and the stroke. So if you're getting an outline around your vector shapes, you want to turn that off. And that's what's great about vectors as well. These are the properties they have. And they can always be adjusted. If you just double click on them, you can change their color. Ah, when you get to the stroke. And then if I want to see appearance, so I'm looking for, because it disappeared, go to the shape tools and it will show you the appearance options up with the shape tool options, right? So when I click on it, when I click on that layer and I have the shape tool activated, I'll see the fill and I'll see the stroke and I can turn off the stroke. Okay, so now this is what I have. These are the shapes I've built so far. This is my overlay showing me what shapes are next. So I, I need some sort of curved shape here that, that gets weird. So I think I'm not going to create that with a circle. Instead, I'm going to try to create it with another shape, which will be a rectangle. And then how do I get that, that funky wave? I'm going to right click. I'm going to do Command T, right click within it, and then do Warp. And then I'm going to push up on this side. And again, I don't need to match it exactly. And then I'm going to pull down here. It's like chicken wire. And then push up here and pull down here. I always think of this like kneading dough. You're like pushing and pulling till you get the shape you want. For you bakers. You do the warp tool by hitting Command T to get to the transform box and then you right click inside the transform box. Now I could also use the warp tool here, just tugging at the top, because I've set the bottom edge now, and I could try to set the top edge. It just needs to overlap enough. 
Whoa. Like that. Because remember, this is like cutouts of paper. So I don't need to, to make it match the eyes because the eyes are going to overlap it. But on this side, I do see a little bit of the pink there. So I'm going to bring that side out and try to keep it pretty curvy without changing my bottom edge. So a lot of this project, the intentions of this exercise is to practice with the warp tool, practice with your shapes. And remember, you'll get credit for it whether you match it exactly or not, but it's kind of the struggle of trying to match it that's a good learning exercise. All right, so hit return. Whoop. Oh no, I did all of that. Then it asked me a weird question, and I panicked. So I get to do it all again. So again, how do you use the warp tool? I put the shape down, I hit Command T, that will give me the transform box, which lets me just do basic things like stretch it. If I hold down Shift, I can stretch it. But then to warp it, I want to right click inside that transform box and choose warp as an option. You can try the other options too. Distort can be really helpful. But warp basically gives you the most direct ability to change the shape. And then I just tug it at different angles in different places to get the shape I want. This is about as much as you can change a shape with warp in one go. That's why I'm doing this kind of S curve. And that's because you only get limited anchor points to adjust using the warp tool. But once you have warped it once and you hit return, if you get that message, just say don't show again and say yes. It says it will turn it into a regular path. And that's fine. These are path layers. That's what we want. All right. Once I've done that, though, I can hit Command T and I can hit the warp tool again. And then I can modify the weird thing I just created. So you can warp it in many, many phases, should you want to. I'm going to bring its top edge out and try to curve that without affecting the bottom within reason. Little more push and pull. All right, I'll take that. So that is the most customized shape I've built so far. This weird thing. So even just using a basic rectangle and then using the warp tool, you can make pretty crazy shapes. You can see all the anchor points it created along the way. This is what a vector path looks like. And then you can always modify it, but with Command T some more. Okay, now I think I need the big white ovals. So those are gonna go over the top of everything. So I'm gonna use the ellipse tool. It's going to start out pink because that's what I last used. It will give me a transform box as soon as I've made the shape. But then in order to move it, I need to either use my arrow keys or the move tool to move it. And then to change its color, I need to double click on the icon and then I want solid white. And then I can hit Command T and I can grow it. And I can rotate it, 